the world were a perfect place, there'd be no need for self-defense. But it is not. Self-defense has become a necessary part of our lives. It is not possible to establish a healthy and humane world without helping the weak and stopping the strong when necessary. We must have the courage to recognize the person with a harmful attitude and lead him from it. We must become sensitive to a threatening environment and learn the flexible body movements and instant changes of power that allow quick and appropriate responses. The techniques we present here are from the art of Aikijutsu. They are exceedingly effective for actual self-defense. The effects of the techniques can be so dangerous that no Aikijutsu competition system has ever been adopted. Traditionally, it has been taught through the method of form and repetition. These techniques use empty hand movements without any weapons. Composed primarily of throwing, blocking, pinning, and controlling techniques, Aikijutsu uses joint manipulation as well as control of critical distance and by using the opponent's force and physical weaknesses to one's own advantage. Controlling the opponent at his moment of weakness allows one to upset his balance as he shifts his center of gravity. This makes it possible to execute throws, blocks, and pinning techniques. Skillful manipulation of joints is very effective and makes it possible for a small person to control a much larger opponent. The techniques shown by A. Kalani, a master in the arts of Aikido and Jiu-Jitsu, have been simplified to give a better understanding of what is important and how each technique works. We think you'll find them easy to follow and interesting to learn. But like learning anything, success takes time. It takes repetition. Work slowly and carefully. You can begin by practicing alone, copying Master Kalani. As you begin to understand the movements, start working with a partner. But be careful. You're studying techniques in which you or your partner could get injured. Always start by stretching and warming up. While practicing, never catch your partner by surprise or fool around when you should be serious. Do not apply too much pressure. Do not follow through hard or fast. This is serious business. These techniques work and can cause severe pain and injury, so be careful. Practice each technique with commitment and purpose. It could save your life. In understanding this type of self-defense, it's important to understand the footwork. Good footwork makes for good self-defense techniques. The main idea is very simple. Just step to the side and get out of the way of your attacker. This is nothing more than a simple step to one side or the other. The next step is that once you've removed yourself from the line of attack, you can easily redirect his strike with a simple brush or touch of your hand. By doing this, you have changed the angle of his attack and rendered his weapons, his hands and feet, useless. Once you are out of the way and have redirected his attack, you can easily move past your attacker, either to escape or to further control his movements by grabbing or striking him from the side. By moving past the attacker, you're now in a position where he can no longer reach you and do any damage. Thus, it is you who now has all the control. Practice these simple moves and understand why they're done. They form the basis for all good self-defense. In our first technique, the attack is a straight right punch. It could also be a strike with a knife or even a push or a grab. It is extremely fast and simple and requires only one hand to do. As the strike comes in, you deflect it down, raise your elbow, striking him in the jaw. Let's take a look at it. As the punch comes in, you deflect it down. Then as the momentum carries the opponent forward, you just raise your elbow, hit him in the open throat, bring his neck back. Continue your counterclockwise sweep with your arm, which knocks him to the floor. You'll notice as the opponent comes in, you've stepped to the side, out of the line of attack. You push his hand down, strike in the throat, continue the sweep, and knock him to the ground. Here it is demonstrated with a knife.
In this technique, the attack is, once again, a straight punch to the face. And as in the previous technique, the response is a deflection of the strike and reversal of your opponent's momentum, which drops him to the ground. Let's take a look in slow motion. You deflect the punch down, wrap your right arm around, counterclockwise, drive his chin back and down. Again, deflect down, right arm goes counterclockwise, push the chin out and down. Let's look from overhead. You see that you first begin by stepping out of the line of attack. You deflect the strike down with your left hand as you step off to your left. Then your right arm circles completely around counterclockwise. You push forward and down on his chin as you step forward and he drops. Once again, deflect, right hand goes counterclockwise in a large circle. Push out and down on his chin as you step forward. Let's look from the reverse angle to take a look at one extra part of the throw. As your opponent steps forward and you step past him, your left hand pulls back in the small of his back as your right hand pushes forward on his chin. This completes the dramatic redirection of his momentum and drops him quickly to the floor. The attack in our third technique is what we call a male-dominated handshake. It is a very fast technique that can be accomplished with one hand. Use it if you're ever in a position where somebody decides they want to control the situation by squeezing your hand very hard, making it hurt so much that you will give in to anything. We begin with a simple handshake. You grab his thumb, bend it back and down, stand him up, turn and throw. Let's look at it in detail now. You begin by grabbing his thumb forcing it backwards, which drops him to the ground. Then you lift him up, turn counterclockwise, pull down on his thumb and throw him. Here we go. You begin by raising your hand and grabbing his thumb, just like grabbing a lever or a gear shift. Force it forward and down, which forces him directly to the ground. At this point, you turn your hand over to the left, so your palm is facing up towards the ceiling. You then lift up, which lifts your opponent up on his tiptoes. You will now turn your hand up again as you begin a counterclockwise pivot. You now pull down on the thumb, which throws him. Again, reach forward, grab his thumb. You are now going to force it away from you and down, which forces your opponent to the floor. You'll now turn your hand over so the palm faces the ceiling and lift your opponent straight up off the floor. He'll be standing on his tiptoe, which gives him lousy balance. You now turn your hand over as you begin a counterclockwise pivot. You'll now pull forward and down on his thumb, which completes the throw. Once again, grab the thumb, force it away from you and down. Turn your palm facing up, lift your opponent up. Begin a counterclockwise turn of your body and your hand. Push down on the thumb and throw. Once more from overhead. Grab his thumb, force him to the ground. Turn your hand upside down, lift him back up. Now you see your two-step counterclockwise turn. Again, grab his thumb, force him to the ground. Turn your hand over, lift him up. Now step first with your right foot, then with your left foot as you pivot counterclockwise. You now pull down on his thumb and throw him. Once more, grab the thumb, force him down, turn his hand over, force him up, right foot, left foot, pivoting counterclockwise and throw. As you can see, an extremely fast and simple technique. Our next technique involves a two-hand choke attack from the front. You basically knock his arms out of the way, duck underneath, and throw. Very simple technique. Let's begin to take a look at it. You knock both hands out to the side, strike to his throat, duck underneath, pull down on his shoulder, and throw him with a hip throw. Let's look at it from overhead. You'll see it is a counterclockwise turn of your body as you do the throw. You begin by knocking both his arms out to the side. 
You then strike with your right arm to his throat or his chin, turn counterclockwise, next grab his shoulder, pull down on the shoulder and the wrist as you bend your knees to be below his center. Again, knock both his hands out to the side, and your left hand is going to grab his wrist as your right hand strikes to the base of his throat or his chin. You turn counterclockwise, grab his shoulder, and pull down. Once again, deflect both his hands, strike, grab his wrist, grab his shoulder, pull down, and throw. One more time now from ground level. We'll be able to see the hip throw better. You begin by deflecting his arms out, strike, grab the shoulder, throw. A step at a time. You deflect both his hands out, step forward, strike him in the chin, grab his wrist, then turn and grab his shoulder as you duck, turn, and throw. Once again, deflect both hands out as you step in between them and strike his chin. You have his wrist in your left hand. You now grab his shoulder with your right hand as you do a counterclockwise turn. Duck underneath and throw him over your hip. Once again, deflect, strike, grab the shoulder, pull down, and throw. In technique number five, the attack is a shirt or lapel grab. Your defense is a simultaneous strike to his chin, a pressure point on his forearm, and a double strike to the throat. It is the initial strike plus the pressure point that disrupts his balance enough that you can control him. Let's take a look at it in slow motion. It's a strike to the chin and the arm pressure point which drops him, allowing you to do a finger lock and the strikes to the throat. Let's look from overhead. A pressure point on the forearm gives you the leverage to drop him to the ground. A double finger lock on his hand keeps him down as you crush his throat. Then a double reverse strike to his throat knocks him back to the ground. Again, your left hand applies the pressure point on the forearm, which with the chin strike drops him to the ground. Grab his two fingers with your right hand as your left hand strikes his throat. Pull down and back on the fingers as you grab his throat. Then a double reverse strike to his throat knocks him to the ground. Once more, you note the left hand grabs his forearm, pressing down painfully on the nerves on top of the forearm. This gives you the leverage to force him to the ground as your right hand has struck him in the chin, which knocks his balance back. Double finger lock with your right hand, grab to the throat with the left. The fingers are pulled backwards and down using your body as a fulcrum. Release the fingers, double strike to the throat. You'll note here how the strike to his chin in the beginning knocks him off balance so that you can force him to the ground easily. The open throat is very easily attacked at the end. In our next technique, the attack is a cross hand or an opposite wrist grab. Your opponent grabs your wrist. You force him to the ground, then throw him. It is very quick and efficient. Let's take a look, a little bit slower, to begin to see how this technique is done. You see, it begins with wrist manipulation, then ends with a kick and a throw. So, as your opponent comes in, you grab into a wrist lock and force him down. A kick to the solar plexus, then a reverse twist of the wrist throws him to the ground. Now, let's begin to look at it from a closer point of view to see how it is done. Your opponent grabs your right wrist. You immediately pin his hand to your arm as your right hand circles clockwise and grabs his forearm. This gives you the leverage to force him to the ground where you can kick him in the solar plexus. You then circle your right hand clockwise, which will allow you to grab his hand with both hands. Your thumbs are on the back, fingers on his palm. You'll turn it counterclockwise as you pivot counterclockwise. 
This will throw him to the ground. Let's look again. You begin by pinning his hand on your arm as your right hand circles clockwise and grasp the top of his forearm. This allows you the leverage to force him to the ground where you kick him in the solar plexus with your right foot. Your right hand now does a clockwise circle which will allow you to grab his hand with both your hands. Thumbs on the back, fingers on his palm. You'll now turn his hand counterclockwise as you pivot counterclockwise, throwing him to the ground. Let's look one more time. Force him to the ground, kick, counterclockwise pivot and twist of the wrist, throwing him to the ground. Here it is through, complete. Force him to the ground, kick, counterclockwise circle, turn of the wrist, counterclockwise pivot of your body, which throws him to the ground. Now let's add one more step, which is an arm lock, which can result in a broken elbow or wrist. Let's take a look at it slowly. Basically, you've turned back clockwise two steps. You have control of his wrist. A pull back will snap the elbow. Again, your hands pull back as you press your knee forward toward his elbow, holding him down. Again from the beginning. Counterclockwise circle, twist of the wrist, pivot and throw, back clockwise, break the elbow. One more time all the way through. Force down, the kick, counterclockwise twist of the wrist, pivot of your body to the throw. Then a clockwise two-step turn down where you control his arm. You can dislocate or break the elbow if you need to. Our next attack is a bear hug, or a two-hand grab from behind. As your attacker strikes, you break his grip, turn, kick, and throw. It involves several different elements, all of which have specific purposes. As your opponent attacks, you begin by dropping your weight and breaking his grip. Turn around, apply a finger lock which drops him to the ground. You stand him up again, pull down, throw him over your back. Let's take a look from overhead. We will be able to see how the bodies work in relation to each other. Here the finger lock lifts him up. You turn underneath his arm, throw him. Again, you drop your weight, break his grip, turn and grab his fingers, bend his fingers back as you turn around, trade hands, kick, lift him up, turn underneath, lift up, throw him over your back. Now, from closer, you break his grip by hitting the back of his hand with your knuckles. You then grab his fingers as you begin a clockwise turn. Then bend his fingers forward and down, forcing him to the ground. Then trade hands, hold his fingers with your right hand, turn your hand counterclockwise so his palm is facing up. Kick him in the stomach. As he begins to rise, continue to lift up and push back on his chin and then turn under his outstretched arm. Pull down on his arm as you lift the opposite leg and throw him over your back. Once again, break his grip, your right hand grabs his two fingers as you turn counterclockwise. You bend his fingers down, forcing him down. Trade hands. Turn his hand over in a counterclockwise turn. Now lift up as you kick. This will stand him up again. Push back on his chin as you turn under his outstretched arm. You now pull down on his arm with your right hand as your left hand lifts up on his left leg behind you. Once again. Break his grip, grab the fingers, counterclockwise turn, force him to the ground, trade hands, kick as he begins to stand up, lift him up, turn underneath, pull down and throw. Once more from ground level. You drop your weight, break his grip, grab the fingers, turn, force him down, trade hands, lift him up, pull back on his head, duck underneath and throw. And again, drop your weight. Strike with your knuckles into the center of the back of his hand. This will break his grip. You now grab his two fingers with your right hand and begin a counterclockwise turn. When you've completed the 180 degree turn, bend him down and trade hands. You see now you turn your hand outward and up. That puts his palm facing the ceiling. Now kick, which starts to stand him up. 
Help him stand up by lifting with your left hand. Duck underneath. You're going to pull down on his bent fingers and throw him over your back. Once more, drop, break his grip, striking the back of his hand with your knuckles. Your left hand will now grab his first two fingers and bend them back as you begin your counterclockwise turn. Bend his fingers back, forcing him down. Trade hands. Turn his hand over by turning counterclockwise. Kick to the abdomen, which raises him up. Stand him up with a strike to the throat. Duck underneath. Pull down on his fingers as your left hand pulls up on his leg. Throw him over your hip. In this technique, the attack is a straight punch to the face. It is a very fast technique, ending with an arm lock which totally controls your opponent. Let's start slowly to begin to break it down. It's a deflection, a strike, a throw, and an arm lock. Again, a deflection of his punch, grab his wrist, turn and throw him to the ground, ending with an arm lock. Now, let's look from overhead to begin to see how the bodies work in relation to each other. As the punch comes in, you deflect it to the left. Strike his neck, grab his wrist, drop your knee, throw him, then pivot back clockwise and apply the arm lock, which we'll deal with later. Again, as his punch comes in, you deflect it with your left hand. Your right hand then strikes to the base of his neck. Your right hand then grabs his wrist. You turn counterclockwise and drop to your knee, pulling his arm down and towards you. This throws him over your hip and onto the ground. You now turn clockwise and apply the arm lock. Again, as he comes in, you deflect, strike his neck, grab with your right hand, turn and drop to your knee, throwing him to the ground. Turn clockwise, apply the arm lock. Once more, drop to your knee, turn clockwise, apply the arm lock. Now let's look at it again from ground level. You redirect the punch, strike to the neck, grab his wrist with your right hand as you pivot counterclockwise, turn, drop to your knee with a turning motion, pull him down. Now pivot clockwise on your knees, pull down. Again, redirect the punch, strike the neck, grab the wrist, turn to your knees, throw, turn back, arm lock. Again, redirect, strike, grab the wrist and shoulder, drop to your knee, throw, turn back, apply the arm lock. Again, deflect, strike, grab the wrist, drop and throw him. Turn back clockwise. Pressure on the shoulder holds him down as you force his thumb out and down. Bend the thumb out and you've got total control. Let's take one final look. In our ninth technique, the attack is a double punch. Your opponent comes in with a right and a left punch, which you deflect and it ends with a wrist lock and a throw. Deflect, deflect, turn underneath, an elbow strike and a throw. Let's look in slow motion. You deflect the first, the second punch, control his wrist as you turn underneath, elbow him which drops his head so you can grab it and throw. Now let's begin to break it down. You deflect the first punch with your raised left hand. The next punch is blocked in the same way with your right hand. Your left hand now crosses to grab his wrist. You turn underneath in a clockwise circle. Elbow him in the stomach, which pulls his head down where you can reach it. You now pull forward and down on his head and arm, which completes the throw. Reverse angle now. This gives a better look at the final throw. Let's take a look at it again. You block the first punch with your left hand. You block the second punch with your right hand. 
Your left hand now will cross and grab his wrist. You'll begin a clockwise circle underneath, and as you turn and duck under, you elbow him in the solar plexus. This drops his head down so you can grab it. You now pull forward and down, along with the other wrist, into the throw. Once more, deflect the first punch with your left hand, deflect the second punch with your right hand. Your left hand now reaches across and grabs his wrist. You circle it counterclockwise as you turn underneath. Elbow him in the stomach, which will drop his head within reach. You now pull down and forward on the head and the arm simultaneously to throw him. And again, block, block, grab the wrist, turn underneath, elbow, grab the head, pull down on the head and the arm. Now let's take a look from overhead. Block the first, block the second, large counterclockwise circle, throw. And again. Block the first punch, block the second punch, clockwise duck underneath, grab the head, throw. Let's break it down. Your left hand blocks the first punch, your right hand blocks the second punch. Your left hand begins to reach across for the arm. Your left hand now does a large counterclockwise circle, which allows you to grab his wrist as you turn underneath, turning clockwise. You then elbow him in the stomach, which bends him forward enough to easily reach his head. You'll now pull forward and down on his head and his arm simultaneously, which throws him. Once more, block the first punch, block the second punch, large counterclockwise circle, grab his wrist, duck underneath, elbow, grab his head and wrist, pull down to throw. Once more. Notice you're turning clockwise underneath his arm as you go. Now, back on the ground level. Let's take a closer look just at the grip on his wrist as you turn underneath. Your left hand goes to the outside of his hand. You circle around counterclockwise. Notice your thumb is on the outside. Now as you duck underneath, you're going to pull down his head and down on his wrist, down towards you, and then up. It is a quick U-shaped move. Watch again. Pull down and then up towards you. You have a very quick, tight circle. In the next technique, the attack is a two-handed push or a two-handed grab. As your opponent comes forward, you deflect both his hands into a 90-degree wrist lock and then a throw. It is accomplished as you turn through a complete 360-degree circle clockwise through the course of the technique. Let's look at it a little more closely and begin to break it down. We'll look from overhead first. You can see the constant counterclockwise turn as you complete the technique. Now, let's begin. Your right hand pushes one hand down as your left hand pushes the other across. Your right hand then begins a large clockwise circle. Your right hand guides his hand through to your left hand, which grabs his wrist as you turn underneath. You now grab his hand with both your hands as you pull down and back. This knocks him off balance so that you can continue your turn and complete the throw as you pull down on his wrist and elbow. Again. You deflect both his hands. Your right hand begins a large clockwise sweeping circle. You control his wrist as you circle it underneath. Then your left hand grabs it as you turn underneath. You now grab his hand with both your hands. You pull down and back, giving you a 90 degree wrist lock. You continue your circle. Pull down on his wrist, which throws him. Again, deflection, large clockwise circle. Grab with the left hand, duck underneath, pull down and back, turn, pull down on the wrist, and throw. Now take a look from the ground to see how the initial deflection of his attack is accomplished. You can see in the beginning that you're going to push down with your right hand as you push across with your left. Your right hand will then grab his arm, push it underneath, where your left hand grabs it as you duck underneath. You then pull back and twist out on the wrist lock. Let's look again. Down with the left, across, down to the right, across with the left, turn underneath, wrist lock. You can see there is instant pain as the lock is applied. You now continue your turn. 
your left hand pulls down on his elbow as your right hand pulls down on his wrist. Once again, double deflection, left hand comes across, right hand continues the movement, you circle his arm around clockwise, grab it with your left as you turn underneath, apply the wrist lock. Continue your counterclockwise pivot. Your left hand will begin to pull down on his elbow and your right hand pulls down on his wrist. Once more, full speed. Our last attack is a straight front kick to your abdomen or groin. This is at once one of the most simple techniques and one of the most difficult because it is a matter of timing. As the kick comes in, you have to step inside and past it, grab your opponent's leg as you pivot and throw him to the ground, then apply a lock. The timing is critical as you step inside the kick. Let's look in slow motion. You grab his outstretched leg, turn and throw him off balance and onto the ground. You begin by reaching under his outstretched leg. Step past him, turn counterclockwise, pull down on his head as you turn. You grab underneath his leg, turn, pull his leg around as you pull his head forward and down. Once again, grab the leg, turn, pull down on his head. Now from a reverse angle and from overhead. You'll notice that it's a continuation of his momentum forward. You step inside the kick, turn so that his momentum carries him forward. You'll notice that you never stop turning, a counterclockwise turn. Now let's take a look at the leg lock at the end. This leg lock produces a great deal of pain in the lower leg and ankle area, as well as a stretch in the groin area. You begin by trapping his leg against your shoulder. By using your right hand to pull in tight against it, you create pain in the ankle. You'll notice also that the other foot steps on his knee and creates a stretch in the groin area. You pull in against the shin as you press down on the opposite knee with your foot. You can then get away quickly and cleanly. Our last section is comprised solely of vital pressure points. These are very simple to do and require almost no effort but produce great pain. Use pressure points to weaken your attacker's grip or to hold your attacker. Let's look at the head first. There's a point between the eyebrows, right next to the eye, at the side of the nostrils, in the middle of the cheek under the cheekbone, directly under the ear, halfway down the side of the neck, at the base of the sternal cleidomastoidal muscle and on the top center of the collarbone. Next is in the center of the throat at the base of the neck. Pressure against the teeth on the lower lip, on the upper lip below the nose, and a grab of the lower lip, pinching and pulling it down. A final method presses the nose against the face. Let's look at the entire head area again. Between the eyebrows, next to the eye, side of the nose, under the cheekbone, at the side directly under the ear, halfway down the neck, at the base of the neck. Center of the collarbone, in the center of the base of the throat, against the lower teeth, under the nose on the upper teeth, pinch and pull down of the lower lip, and pressing in on the nose. Now, let's turn to the arms and hands. The first pressure point is in the center of the biceps. Next is on the outside of the elbow, on the muscle on the top of the forearm. Moving down, you may grab the wrist and press down. Let's look at that from a reverse angle. You grab the wrist and press forward and down, forcing your opponent down. Next, between the thumb and forefinger. Moving to the other hand, we again have a wrist pressure point on the inside of the wrist, seen here from the side. 
on the inside of the upper arm, just above the elbow, and last in the armpit. This does not tickle. Once again, the center of the biceps, outside of the elbow, muscle on top of the forearm, grab of the wrist and pressure down. Seen now from a reverse angle. That's a tight grab on the wrist and a twist forward, forward and down. Next, between the thumb and forefinger, then an inside wrist grab, seen from a second angle. Between the biceps and triceps on the inside of the arm, and lastly, in the armpit. The third section will be devoted to the lower body. We begin with a pressure point where the leg joins the torso, then next to the groin. On the inside of the thigh, just above the knee, on the top of the instep, and down where the toes join the foot. Let's take another look. At the top front of the leg, groin area, center of the inside of the thigh, on top of the instep, and at the base of the toes. Let's repeat it again. At the top front of the leg, next to the groin, inside the lower thigh, just above the knee, on top of the instep, and at the base of the toes, between the first and second toes. Again, where the leg joins the body, just outside the groin area, inside the thigh above the knee, on top of the instep, and on top of the instep where the toes join the foot. The techniques we've presented here are efficient and effective. As a method of self-defense, they are extremely flexible. They can be applied to many similar situations beyond the few we've shown here. For example, technique number eight shows a straight punch to the face, but it could just as easily be a one-hand grab or push of your shoulder. Similarly, all the techniques we've taught provide the flexibility of being used in different situations. To greatly increase your overall self-defensive capabilities, we suggest that you learn each of the techniques from the other side, like a mirror image of the way you've just been taught. In other words, if a technique like number two has been taught with the attacker coming at you with a right punch, learn it also as if it were a left punch. Some exercises may not be suitable for your body. Please consult your physician before participating in this or any other exercise program.